Hey folks, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with American Resiliency. Uh, today is a big day. Today, the fifth national climate assessment came out. You know, I know we've been waiting on this for figures. So you can't download the full report yet. The PDF is not available. It's going to be available in English and in Spanish, they say coming soon. Hopefully this is true. But what we need is the figures and all of the figures are here. If you look at ncaa2023.globalchange.gov, all figures, this is what you need. All of the figures in the report are available for download. And there's some interesting stuff in here. We have the uh, proposed death rates for 2025. This is for modeling RCP 4.5. This is modeling 8.5 at mid-century. 8.5, we're talking about not bringing emissions down. 4.5, this is the plan that we're on. This is the plan we're trying to follow. Throughout the maps, I continue to see the feds using 4.5 language and a real sense that that continues to be a scenario worth modeling for. So this is good news. Anyone who's been watching the data coming in over the last six months, you know that it's been looking really scary. It's important to note the last six months of climate data is not going to be in these projections. So when we're talking about this consensus, it's been in review for months. This is talking about long-term trends before we hit whatever is going on with ocean temperatures. Hopefully with 2024, we'll see a peak in heat and it'll drop by 2025 as we leave this strong El Nino system and move more on a long-term curve. If we continue to move on the long-term curve, we can see there are parts of the United States that are looking at higher mortality due to climate, namely the Southeast and the Southwest. We've talked about that before. I think it's good to see the actual range where people should consider that the direct impacts of climate change are gonna be likely injurious to their health. When we look in the US, there were risks around fires that I had talked about in the state level forecasts that were not present so much in the NCA4. We see an increased focus on large fires and we see that the area where we expect fires to change reflects the dangers that I spoke about in the original state level forecasts. So this is useful. This is an area where our models aren't completely falling apart. I want you to note that this figure here, looking at mid-century, is at 8.5 modeling. If we're able to stay on a 4.5 pathway, we do anticipate fire danger in the Midwest here, and we will need to be taking air quality precautions throughout the Midwest, but I wouldn't anticipate it to be this severe. Talking about other changes to extremely valuable areas, other changes to our three destination zones, the inland Pacific Northwest, the Northern Midwest, and Northern New England. We can see now extreme elevated fire danger for our highly conserved area of Northern New England. You'll see in a minute, this basket is tightening up a little bit. All right, looking at some other big picture things. For many of us, the big picture is water. I am happy to say that we do have updated precipitation projections and projections for many other water related factors. Here we can see where predictions are showing a um, likely drought trend. We've talked about before the drought trend likely to afflict Hawaii and the other islands, the Pacific Islands and the Caribbean Islands. We do see drought trend impacting that southern tip of Florida, starting to help us see what landscape transformation is going to happen in this area that is looking at a true tropic climate, like a mango growing climate, but it's going to be dry. We also see drought trend as expected across the Southwest. And we see uh, that we have good stability in the inland Pacific Northwest. You don't want it to be too wet, right? We have identified previously some of these challenges facing the Midwest in terms of increased precipitation, often coming at times that are difficult for planting. I'd like to highlight the relatively mild changes expected in this very favorable band of Wisconsin. This version of the NCA does more to show the range of the models. 
You can see that with their ensemble modeling systems, which I'll be talking about more, there's a real difference between the wettest, the driest, and the average projections. So this lets you see a little bit more about how they're putting everything together, the way they're putting it together, whether you're looking at the driest projections or the wettest projections, the Northeast is looking way wetter than I think we anticipated based on the fourth national climate assessment. So as you're thinking about how those landscapes are going to change, it's worth noting this increase in uh, moisture in this potential destination area, somewhat more stable right here, right in the sweetest spot of it, which I'm glad to say does look fairly conserved. Checking out another important soil element, the changes in soil moisture right in the heart of the growing season. By mid-century, we're able to get a clearer bead on this problem that is going to be afflicting the northern Midwest, which is going to be this irregular, potentially flooding precipitation. When we look at this map, I'd like you to note that we're looking at a very, very small decrease in your soil moisture in both the desirable areas of the Northeast. Very, very small increase, which is good because the other hydrological changes are so big in this sweet pocket here of the inland Pacific Northwest. We see a lot of interesting lines here, right? And we see these lines are being followed across the different models. We need to get into it more. This dropped today. I'm like nuts and staring through time here. So we're gonna just keep doing the best we can. But the fact that there are these flipping points that appear to be fairly conserved across models, to me, that's important information for making preparation for storm damage. If you're anywhere along those lines where we shift from wet to dry, we're talking about wind patterns, right? We have to be. So this is fascinating. This is interesting news when we talk about the prairie pothole region, when we talk about what should stay row crop, what should shift to table crop, what should be shifted towards um, what we call ecosystem services production, what should be taken out of crop rotation, put into habitat so that we can ever have any ducks. More about this later. I want to restate, if you go into the report from these figures, all of this water stuff is being modeled at RCP 4.5. The amount of computer power that went into modeling these water figures, that they only modeled them at 4.5 instead of 8.5, says something. It says that 4.5 is still considered viable by major ag scientists. Hopeful news. Another important thing that we're going to want to check and see how it's going to impact our plants are the projected changes in plant hardiness zones. I think that this is an important figure to orient yourself as maybe you're starting to work your way through the NCA5. Please notice that here they're talking about SSPs instead of RCP scenarios. Fortunately, we have a conversion table here. So if we're talking about RCP 4.5, well, it's a two degree future, our most likely future, you're talking about SSP 2 through 4.5. If you're talking about RCP 8.5, that higher emission scenario we talked about in the first gen forecasts, now we're going to say SSP 5 to 8.5 in the new NCA 5. So when we're looking at this SSP 5 to 8.5, we're talking about high end projections. I got to dig into it. I know that they have created 4.5 projections, but from reviewing the um, data, recently reviewing the figures reviewing the information recently that went into the nca4 i can tell you this is not showing huge changes this is showing some fine-grained changes from the old 8.5 projections i think by and large the plant hardiness zone projections hold from nca4 we'll get further into it i'll go through this with a fine-toothed comb but I think this is good news and we got to take away some of this most important potential good news before I dive into like the full on uh, horror show that I'm sure this report is going to be. I'm excited to bring you updated, detailed state level forecast information. I think that it's worth taking a look at this data and processing it in terms of big picture destination regions first. 
That's what I've been doing, staring through time a little bit for the last two or three hours trying to tell you this story. When we're looking at the westernmost destination region, inland Pacific Northwest, uh, many of the factors look like they're lining up nicely. It looks like that area around the Palouse that is very, um, very potentially fruitful looks to me like the margins have gotten smaller and tighter. We should be able to identify the sweet spots better than we have before. In terms of the Northern Midwest, I think that we're getting a good heads up about relative risk of fire danger. I think many of us got the heads up about that this last summer, right? When we experienced a lot of smoke coming into the region for the first time. In terms of our precipitation challenges, which we have always known would exist, we have a much more fine grained understanding now in these modeling projections. I think as we dig into it more, we'll be able to look at how those precipitation patterns play out over our aquifers. And I think that in a lot of that wetter looking area, the area where the soil moisture is going to be projected to be higher, could be really news, really, really good news for a permaculture approach, for fruit and nut crops, for fruit canes that have been benefiting so far already from this wetter soil trend earlier in the growing season. When we're looking at the Northeast, we see some initial changes related to precipitation, bigger than expected precipitation changes over there, particularly in Maine. This is gonna increase the level of difficulty in Maine and tighten the zone of stability. Looks like it's gonna tighten up really tough around Northern Vermont. I'm gonna look into this in more detail. We should anticipate that I'm gonna be doing separate forecasts for Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. I know last time they were combined. This time we have enough information. The level of detail is higher. They absolutely need to be handled on their own. So thanks for bearing with me. I wanted to give you a little look. I think it's good news. It's good news. A lot of the broad strokes from NCA4 look like they're continuing into NCA5. NCA5 is going to get us a better bead on the challenges, the opportunities that are coming our way. One other thing that's worth pointing out when we talk about areas of stability, I don't know if anyone from Appalachia was watching this, but if you were, I hope you noticed that line of stability, that spine of stability that I talked about in the Appalachia focused video, looking at long term and higher risk scenarios. You're still looking great. I was really happy when I saw that line of stability just keep popping out on every map. So, all right, I'm going to try and like return to present day, present time for a little bit. Let's not freak out. I'm going to get into way more detail on this. If you want to study with me, I'll, let's do it. You know, I think there's a lot to go through here with the NCA5, and it's going to be really valuable. It's going to help us get ready. I'm going to talk to you all again about this soon. Bye. I'm sure you all can tell I'm like a total maniac right now. Thank you to everyone who gives, who supports the project, who's gotten us to this point. I'm really excited about this next generation level of state level forecasts. I think we have the opportunity to really get the word out, really help our fellow Americans prepare for what's coming. This Sunday, the 19th at 2 p.m. Central, we have a community chat coming up. I was gonna talk about like stories of people's resilience experiences, but I'm I'm like in charge enough here that we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna dig into this report together. I'll be able to screen share so that we can talk about figures. It should be cool. Same link. I don't have time to edit the slide because I gotta go read to people and stuff, but thanks for being here with me. I think that you know, if we can stay on the path, if we haven't hit a tipping point, if we stay on the path, this report is really important for understanding our local and national ag outlook. This water information is great. Let's get into it. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.